Hello, this is Kathleen McKee of Olene's.com, Machine Embroidery Art. These are just a few examples of the feature photo stitch on PE Design. Uh, this is an excellent feature that I don't use a lot, so I'm going to introduce to you my friend Edwina Bankston, who is an expert at getting excellent results with what I consider the best photo stitch feature on the market. Hello, my name is Edwina Bankston, and my friend Kathleen asked me to do a short video on photo stitch because uh, I use it a lot and I like it a lot and she's had some questions about it so hopefully I'll be able to impart some information that you'll find helpful and you'll be able to use so here we go get started you open up your software and mine is already open and then you go to image the image tab which is already open <coughs> here and you go to the open tab folder here and click on that <coughs> and click from file to get your image. Now the image I'm going to be using today is one that I downloaded from the internet and it's an image of uh, the singer Rihanna because it was nice big size and It was nice and clear and it had all of the, the attributes I was looking for. It had the clarity, it had the detail, and it had the contrast. <clears throat> so I'm going to open that into the software. And you can see it is huge, 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 huge. Okay. Um, I can go in and reduce it if necessary, but because I'm using Photo Stitch, you don't really have to do that, and you'll understand why here in a minute. So then I'm going to click on Photo Stitch 1, click Color because that's what most people use. And here you get to the area where you can um, start using your mask. You have some that are already built in. And for whatever reason, the software holds on to the first, the last five that you used. <clears throat> and I had done this earlier, so I already had the mask. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do it over. So I will click on that first one. And you can use that to bring it in like so and crop it in that manner if you choose and then adjust it but what I'm going to do is click on this icon here the second one over to the right and I want to mask out the background because I don't want uh, the background stitched out at all and all you have to do is go along the line grab it with, and left click and you're gonna get a little square and everything inside of that square will be stitched and everything outside of that square will not be. <clears throat> now, when you're doing this, in this with this image, you got the little wisps of hair and the little curls of hair. Well, first of all, I'm gonna scroll in so I can see better what I'm doing, where I'm going around there. Uh, some of you might wanna keep in and others, you have to take a little bit of artistic license and decide if you want that there, if it's going to really contribute to the finished product or not. <clears throat> and when you go to the next screen to preview it, if you like it, fine. If not, you can always go back and do a little bit <clears throat> of re-editing. And I'm just going to go around the outer edge of what I want digitized. And here, as you can see, as I'm getting down to where this part is, and you got that little space in there, if I go around this edge and come out, all of that white space in there is going to be digitized. And I don't think I really want that, because I don't think it's really going to make a difference. So again, I'm taking a little bit of artistic license here, and I'm just going to go around that little wisp and go here <coughs> and photo stitch will work not just for photographs, it'll work for just about any image as long as uh, it's a good clear image. Every photograph is not going to work. Every image is not going to work. But for the most part, if you've got a program like uh, Corel Draw or Photoshop, and me, I use a lot of MS Paint. I can pretty much get what I'm looking for if I go there and edit what I'm doing first. And uh, and save it and then bring it into the software that usually works pretty good for me. <clears throat> the other thing about Photo Stitch is that 
the more detail that you decide you want when you get to the settings page and start playing with the settings the higher the stitch count is going to be and the higher the stitch count the longer it's going to take to stitch out but you get such a wonderful end result that it's worth it so I'm coming around up on the other side now and again I'm gonna leave that little wisp there out the other thing with photo stitch is hooping now generally when I hoop, the first thing I do is I hoop, I fuse onto the back of whatever fabric I'm going to be stitching on, two pieces of the Floriani no-show mesh, which I absolutely love, uh, slightly larger than the finished design size uh, at 45 degree angles. And then I will hoop a medium to heavyweight piece of tearaway. And then when I get to the machine, I will float one to two pieces of medium to heavyweight cutaway. And that's usually enough. <clears throat> um, because of the way it stitches out in the distribution of the stitches. Okay, now I've got my masking all done. And you zoom out. <clears throat> and you can see I probably need to adjust right here. Right in here close to her face. I don't want her chin to have a little dimple in it like that okay and I think that's gonna work so now you have this image tuned tab and you click on that and this is the default setting now I will normally take this up one or two clicks and as you take it up you can see it sharpens the original photo and the sharper it is <coughs> the more detail you're gonna get in your stitch out and this is um, the lightness or the darkness that you can adjust here and you can see as you go up it gets lighter like so and if you go down it gets darker like so but I'm going to leave that at the default because that looks pretty good for me and here is your lightness your contrast the same thing you go to the left gets a little lighter go to I mean darker and to the right gets a little lighter but I'm going to leave that right there then I'm going to click OK and then you click Next. Now here is where you can change the size of it to the hoop. For the purpose of this video I'm using the 8x8 hoop <coughs> because that works pretty good and you don't want to use anything smaller than a 5x7 for any type of photo stitch and you try, want to try to keep the number of faces or you know items in there to 2 to 3 so you get a good end result. So here, if you decide you want to change your <coughs> hoop size, you can do that here also where it says design settings. And I've got it set to uh, the combo single needle machine, although I have a multi-needle. I'm using it for the settings for this, but it would be the same size. And it's on the default, which is uh, the 4x4 or the 100 by 100 millimeter. So I'm going to take it up to the 8x8, which is 200 by 200 and I'm going to click OK and that changes that and then I'm going to click the fit to page and that brings that big piece down to fit within um, the parameters of my hoop and if you look on the, the original design page on the software you can see where it's reduced it down so that's good and then I'm going to click next and we're waiting for it to work and there it is now the thread palette I'm using is the Madeira Poly Neon. Um, you can use the Brother Enhanced depending on you know the colors and how much detail you want. And here you get to make other changes. Uh, you can increase the number of colors and I found for the type of work that I do most of the time 10 colors is more than enough. <coughs> but sometimes you may want to use more. You can go anywhere up to you know, 12, 14 or you can decrease the colors depending on what it is you're looking for. You can also customize your colors. You can add or remove colors. You can add here if, if you click on this tab, but I'm not going to go into that today. And here in your sewing options, you, for your detail, it's set from coarse to fine. The default is in the middle, and I usually take it all the way up to fine. <clears throat> so you take it up to fine and you click update preview and you wait for it to work and you see you get a lot 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 more detail you can see things that are, are sharper the eyes are sharper the eyelashes <coughs> excuse me 
and the next choice is your run pitch the default is three millimeters and that's pretty good if that's what you want but I again I'm all into as much detail as I can get so I usually take mine down to a 2.3 2.4 and you have a check mark here for the so page color that's the default and I normally leave that because the page color here is white and if there's any white in the design and you uncheck this it will not stitch it out as part of the design so I will leave that there and also here is your last chance to change the brightness or the contrast if I take that up and update the preview it brightens it up a bit and you can see the details are even more noticeable now since I took the run pitch down to 2.3 I'm going to take that back to default update preview okay and the same here with the lightness or the darkness you can change it here to whatever it is that you prefer and the other thing you get to do here on this page is to select from candidates so if you click here you get nine different renderings of the design the one with the black box around it like right here is the one that you have uh, selected but if you decide you'd like one of the others better all you have to do is click on it the black box will go around that and if you click OK that's the one it will select but I'm gonna go with the one that I was working with because I like the looks of that and once all that is done the last thing you have to do is click finish and you wait while it thinks and thinks and works and works and thinks and works takes a minute or two and here it comes <clears throat> and that is the finished design now this is I believe let's check the view this is the realistic preview but if you want to get the realistic preview is just the computer rendering of what it thinks it's going to look like in this case which is not too bad because that was a really really large uh, image that I downloaded but in most instances if you click on the stitch preview that's what that gives you a better idea of what it's really going to look like stitched out and you also get another opportunity here on this screen if you want to change some colors you can change some colors and sometimes it'll put in depending on the number of colors that you have it'll put in different little spots of color where you maybe have 10 stitches 30 stitches and they may or may not make a difference to the design and what I have found when that happens because I'll look in the stitch order here to see you know how many stitches there are in each color the easiest way for me to do that is to click on the design right click divide stitches by color and then go over to the sewing order and select whatever set of stitches that I think I might want to get rid of because you know it's not going to make any difference one way or the other and select that right click that and delete it which I'm not going to do because once I do that it won't let me get it back so what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo and now it's all back together again and there you are that is the down and dirty for photo stitch uh, there are some other things because under photo stitch if you go back to image under photo stitch one you have the choices of color which this is sepia tone gray or mono under photo stitch two you have the choices of color which is the four different colors of thread in four different directions that it stitches in in order to create the design and the mono and I believe that uh, Kathleen has some examples of uh, some things that I did in the photo stitch color, photo stitch one color, photo stitch one mono, and photo stitch two mono. So you get an idea of uh, what those look like. And hopefully this has been helpful and you'll be able to go forward and do some things, start playing with your photo stitch. But the biggest thing is, it's just to play with it. And the most time consuming part of it is going to be when you're doing your masking and when you're playing with your settings and when you do your stitch out. Oh, and the one other thing that I do, once I get everything hooped, before I do the first stitch out, the first color, I will do uh, the basting stitch so that all the layers of the material and the, uh, the stabilizer 
are pretty much together so there's not a chance for it to shift or anything while it's stitching out. And thank you very much. I wanted Hope this to show is you a couple of more examples that Edwina did using Photo Stitch 1. This one was done in color. <coughs> this one was done in monochrome. And both of these are done with using Photo Stitch 1. But look at this interesting result you can get using monochrome with Photo Stitch 2. Now, I've never used Photo Stitch 2, and I think this uh, has a very unique effect. Uh, she also created her own motif stitch using the programmable stitch creator. So, I thought you might want to see these.